Hello, everyone, and welcome to our mock live class today. My name is Kate Deering. I am a coordinator for recruitment and admissions here at Geese Online, and I am very excited to spend the next hour or so with you. Our time today will be spent providing you with an opportunity to understand how live lectures are delivered and have a chance to interact in this setting today. We offer three online master's degrees programs, the IMBA, a master's of uh, business administration, the IMSA, master of science and accountancy, and IMSM, masters of science in management, as well as three brand new graduate certificates in strategic leadership and management, accounting data analytics, and digital marketing. GEESE graduate level programs are innovative, they are affordable, and they're designed to be specifically online to offer flexibility and access for full-time working professionals. Today, you will experience a webinar from one of our talented faculty members and be able to get a glimpse into what kind of content is shared within GEESE. Our courses balance foundational material shared on the Coursera platform with an interactive high engagement component as well. The high engagement component includes a live class each week and many other facets to learning like group projects, office hours, networking, and also being part of a great university like Illinois. Since we don't have a lot of time today to chat too much about the programs, I am going to share this QR code uh, that's gonna be included on this first screen. If you'd like to speak with myself or an admissions counselor to discuss your goals and whether or not this program is right for you. I would love to connect. So just scan this QR code with your camera and it will link you to a short form to fill out. Before we get started learning about time value of money with Professor Lima, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. I see that some of you have your cameras on. Thank you so much. I encourage all of you to turn on your cameras so that we can see your wonderful faces here today and also just to be able to interact as if this was a real weekly live class. Please note that you are all muted in order to minimize background noise during this class. Now, there may be moments when Professor Lima invites you to participate and our technical team will unmute your microphone for you. If you have any questions, please use the raise hand feature and we will call on you. We will have a breakout session during our time today, which will allow you to participate with your fellow session attendees. And then lastly, we invite you to feel comfortable participating in the chat. Feel free to interact with Professor Lima and other attendees, and I will also be um, able to answer any questions that you have. I'm so excited for our live class today. In this mock live class, Professor Gerlando Lima will guide students through one of the important topics nowadays, time value of money or TVOM. This approach is used in all business courses where we can see increases in prices and ratios used in the market. We're going to cover the following topics present value, future value, time, rates, and annuities. This mock class will give you, give all of you really, um, an idea of what interactive live sessions are like within Geese Online. Professor Gerlando Lima completed his bachelor's from Rio Grande do Norte Federal University in 2002, and then went on to complete a master's and a PhD in accountancy from the University of Sao Paulo in 2007. He went on to complete a postdoc in economics from the University of Coimbra, Portugal in 2009. And Professor Lima is currently teaching, uh, is a teaching assistant professor of accountancy at the Geese College of Business. He also spends time working as a member of the American Accounting Association Board of Directors. And he is also a financial market consultant in financial and international accounting. And he currently teaches Aki 500, 501, A and B, Aki 503, and um, those are all in the IMSA program here at Geese. So that was a lot of information. Um, I'm very excited to turn this over to Professor Lima and enjoy this live class. So thank you so much, Kate, for doing that. Yes, I'm extremely excited tonight yeah, to talk with you all. Hey, I said tonight, but maybe you, you are still in the morning or in the next day, we are in the future. Yeah, this is how we work every time with all the students in the world. That's amazing to be here in this very international university. Yeah, and, and I am part of that. Yeah? I'm from Brazil and I made um, uh, a lot of courses outside 
and but I'm here for five years as a faculty uh, at Gaze, and I'm so proud of that for to be one of uh, the factors from um, the best uh, department in accountants in the world. That's really amazing. I'm, I'm so proud of that. So, uh, and I'm proud to be here with you all to show how we work with our um, uh, online courses. So this is one of the online courses we do here. And this is one class I teach for all my students on ACI 501 and ACI 500. Okay, so this is uh, the first step on accountancy. But I choose this one, I choose this class because this topic is very important to all the students that are working with business, okay? So if you're thinking about um, uh, business administration, finance, accountancy, and marketing, uh, or going through MSTMs, uh, MSM, or any other one. So it, for sure, it's so important to know about time value of money. In accountancy mainly, uh, because uh, we need this to measure, uh, measure the assets, liabilities, uh, on finance, we need this one also to uh, for decision making process. Okay, and on business administration, it's very important to uh, the same as finance to decision making process. Okay, so this is why I will uh, work with you tonight. How we work in a live session? So we're gonna uh, try to make you very high engaged here. So this is why I ask you to start your video and uh, mute your microphone but if you have any questions you can go through the chat and you can raise the hand we can unmute to you and we can uh, make some interactions here okay so the agenda for today it's about the, these concepts that kate talked to us like it's going to be about simple and compound interest future value of a single amount so i'm going to show you how to work uh with uh these amounts and how to calculate them mainly uh, i will ask you and i think you can do it in advance now you can open your excel i'm gonna tell you how to do this with excel okay or if you brought your calculator or if you downloaded your calculator from your cell phone we are going to work here mainly with hp 12c okay the financial calculator but if you have Texas, um, uh, the Texas calculator, you can use it. Also, it's going to be a little bit different, but it's in the, in, in the end, it's always the same. Uh, if you don't have anything, uh, Excel or any calculator, if you, you can download a financial calculator in your cell phone too, okay? There are some uh, for free. There are some that the price is not so high as the physical one, okay? So I'm going to go through... Uh, the annuities, how to calculate and why we have the annuities, okay? I'm going to work here with uh, polls. So we are going to see a pop-up in your uh, on your screen, okay? So no worries about that. This is not a virus. Uh, it's I'm going to ask you to uh, mark uh, one, uh, one answer from our questions. And we are going to try to make a breakout room tonight. So, okay, we we'll up upload uh, uh, a handout. And you're going to work with your friends, and I'm going to visit the breakout room, and in the end, we're going to solve together. Okay, everyone? So this is how we're going to work tonight. So the first thing, I'm going to go through the lecture. This is what we do here. I'm not going to go through it more than 12 minutes, so we are going to get as more engaged as we can, okay? So why time value of money? So the time value of money means that money can be invested today to earn interest and grow to a larger dollar amount in the future. And it's very important also when we see that there is a price of an asset or some installments that you see when you are making transactions with other companies. And we have to put all these amounts in the present value to compare the options we have, okay? So when we have options, the best way to do it is to compare the amount that we're going to pay in the end as the total amount. And this is why we put all the money, all the money from all the transactions into only one period on time. OK, so when we do that, we can see if we're going to pay more in one option compared with another one 
or maybe you are going to receive less money if we make some choices, okay? Why that? Because as we know, uh, market works with a ratio, and this ratio will measure how much you're going to pay more or pay less on installments or in the future, okay? And here we can compare also with rates from countries where you see rates that are higher or they are lower than other countries and where there is more risk or less risk, okay? So this is why it's so important to understand how time value of money works. So one thing that as I talk to you now, if I invest in a bank and I have an annual yield of 6%, the future value of it is 106. So I'm going to receive an amount of money in the end because the money can be invested and I'm going to earn that interest through time, okay? Or maybe how much I will receive in the future and how much I will have in the present value. So you use it for valuing a variety of assets and liabilities, okay? And I'm talking about accountancy, but think about stocks, Okay, think about uh, saving accounts and think about if you want to maybe make a choice between leasing or financing an asset. Okay, so this is why it's so important for us. But the first point before going through the hardest uh, calculation, we know that there are two kinds of interests. Okay, there is the simple versus compound interest. So that's the amount of money paid or received in excess of the amount of money borrowed or lent. This is the concept of that. And uh, one thing that is very important also, like how to do I calculate that? So the simple interest, you only have to have the initial investment and you multiply by the annual interest versus the period of time, okay? So this is why it's called it simple it's a linear function okay it's not a logarithmic per, uh, function like the compound one so it's simple and it's easy also converted to the other one and the compound interest and includes interest not only on the initial investment but also on the accumulated interest earned in previous period but there is one thing that is very important how that to tell you why when do you use them okay or which one uh, the bank uses like in the market. Uh, so the simple interest one, in most of the cases, it's used by short-term transactions, okay? And the compound interest is used on long-term transactions, okay? And why that? Let me show you one thing. I think uh, you remember that I said, Simple interest is a linear function, okay? And compound interest is a logarithm. So if I put both on a graph like this, thanks God that I'm, I'm, I'm a good accountant as a drawer, yeah? So uh, when I have a simple interest, I have a linear function like this. Y is equals to amount and x is equal to t okay so here is a linear function and for the simple interest okay so when i work with the compound interest i work like this okay as a logarithm so they touch each other when t equals to one okay so short term means less than one year here, okay? And long-term means higher than one year. Oh, this is why the banks love so much to give, tells me that they are using a simple interest in a short term. Yes, that's it. They always win, okay? Because when they are using the simple interest, they function like this, they have higher amounts, higher interests compared to the other line I have here, the other function for the compound interest. So the compound interest long-term higher than one year, okay? And simple interest lower than one year. So this is what happens 
uh, when we are using both and when we have to use one for uh, instead of the of the other one, okay? So, but let me tell you how to calculate that, okay? So the simple interest, we're gonna use that formula. We have the investment made, 1,000. Uh, annual interest, 10%. And the time of period one year. So the simple interest will give me 100 in one year. Okay. So when I go to the compound interest, and here I see that when occurs when money remains invested for multiple periods. So Cindy Johnson invested 1,000 in a savings account paying 10% interest compounded annually. How much interest she earns in each of the next three years, okay? So the compound, as I told you before, it's gonna be over and over the amount. So for the first year, I have an initial deposit of 1,000. And in the first year, remember T equals one, it's the same for both. So for the previous one, the simple interest, I got in one year, 1,100, okay, or well, $1,100. And it's the same on compound. But when I go ahead for the next year, uh, my base will not be 1,000 anymore. It will be 1,000 uh, 1,100. So my interest will, will not be 100, but 110. And uh, with this, I go forward and I see that in three years, I have 1,331, okay? So this is the biggest difference I have from both. Uh, you saw that the calculation for uh, how much I have in the simple interest is totally easy. But before going to the calculation of this other one, the compound on formulas or Excel or on, on, the, on the calculator, let me talk a little bit about the effective rate, okay? So it's very common to see, and it's, I think this is the only country in the world, uh, United States, that when we see a uh, rate, it's always per year. It doesn't say like 6% per month or 6% per semester. You only see 6%, okay? So when you see 6%, it, it, we already know here in the US that it's per year, okay? But time, it's compounded by time, okay? So time that I'm gonna call N, Okay, number of periods, it's very important. The rate also, as I'm telling you, and this rate has to follow the periods that the interests are being paid, okay? So how is it compounded? How is my rate that I have is compounded? So it's compounded by, can be semi-annually, quarterly, or monthly, okay? So when we see something like, Assuming an annual rate of 12%, like I'm making a lease and it tells me that I'm going to use 12%, the, the, the person, the rate, rate ratio use it on, on the lease I am calculating now that is given to me is 12%. I have to see how it's compounded, how it goes with the periods that I have to pay the installments, okay? So if it's compounded semi-annually, I have to divide 12 by two because I have two semesters, okay? If it's compounded quarterly, I have to divide by four because I have four quarters in one year, okay? If, I have, if I'm doing it monthly, I have to divide by 12, so it means 1%. So I have 6% if it's semi-annually, 3% if it's quarterly, and we're percent if it's monthly, okay? So I depends of N, okay? I depends of how am I gonna pay these interests, okay? So period and I has to be very synchronized, okay, everyone? So after that, after showing you that, I can show you also uh, how I'm gonna work with the interest. Okay, so look here. Cindy Johnson invested 1,000 in a savings account paying 10% interest compounded twice a year. So if it's compounded twice a year, 
the period that I'm paying the interest is on six months, okay? Not per year. So the 10% interest means that I have to use 5% and I have to use N equals two if I wanna know in the end of the year, okay, everyone? So what will be her investment balance at the end of the year? And what is the effective annual interest rate? So when I go through what I talked to you before, instead of 10%, I will divide by two because it's 10 annually on six months and after six months. So I have 5% multiplied by $1,050. And I have the amount again, because it's compounded, okay, multiplied by 5%. So I have 1,102.50. Okay, and when I how sh, how do I calculate an effective rate? The effective rate it's like I'm calculating a kind of return. Okay, the effective return and the return the formula is uh, worldly knows that I have the payback on the numerator. Okay, and the investment in the denominator. Okay, so the effective rate is always calculated, and here we go. Like I received it back 102.50 and I invested 1000. So I have a real effective rate of 10.25%. 10, 10 okay, differently than the one I had known before because it's not compounded yearly, okay, or annually. So because of that, let's go now and let me show you how to calculate the formula directly, okay? So the present value of a single amount is calculated like you can see here, instead of uh, F, uh, PV times N and times I, like the single one, I think maybe you have seen this one before. So future value is equals to present value times one plus I elevated to N, because this is a logarithm like I showed you before, yeah, like this. Okay, so this is a logarithmic. So this is why we use this formula, okay? If I wanna calculate the PV, I will uh, do it in the other way, like PV in the other side and FV in the other side, and I have this. But let me tell you, do I have to use this formula every time? Not nowadays, okay? Nowadays, I think it's very difficult to see somebody making that. Okay, but if you do it, no worries. Okay, I'm only telling you because everything is easier today. So this is why we use uh, the calculators. Okay, so in this one, we can see that uh, 1000 was the amount that I call it the PV. Okay, here we have that 10% was I and three equals to N. Okay. One thing that I will ask you always, okay, and I have this uh, recorded in a live session, a recorded live session on Coursera, and we always ask the students to watch Coursera before coming to, the, to this class, okay? But in this case, we always make, we always draw the, uh, the, uh, um, the graph, the financial graph, okay? So this line that I showed you, it's time, okay? And I'm gonna work from the left to the, to, the, to the right, okay? So I'm telling you that the present value that I invested is 1,000, okay? So I'm gonna use from the left. So I'm gonna show in the left that I have invested 1,000, okay? And invested means a cash outflow. And cash outflow, we are gonna use an assumptions for outflows that the arrow is down, is an arrow down, okay? And uh, the inflow will be an arrow up. So in this one, I have an arrow down here, call it PV, and that's 1,000. And I'm gonna receive here the future value. So it's, it's the opposite. If I'm investing, I'm having the money back in the future, okay? And this n equals to three and i equals to 10, okay? So this is how I draw the graph. This is very important, mainly when I'm working with annuities, okay? So in this case, 
Can I use, what should I use, Jolando? So you can use the table. Uh, the table, it's uh, in a lot of books, you have a table like this, okay, where you have the interest rate and the periods. So in this case, I have a factor here and I will look for 10% and equals three. So I have the factor, the factor multiplied by the present value. So I got the same amount I had using the formula. Okay, how I use it here and I found 1,331. But I will ask you now to use the calculator, okay? So don't be jealous, but I'm gonna use my super powerful calculator here, okay? So this is the HP 12C and I'm gonna show you how to make that. So remember, PV present value equals to 1,000 and equals to three periods and I equals to 10, okay? So I'm gonna type and I'm gonna see how easy it is, okay? And you're gonna do it also on taxes if you have taxes in your hands, okay? So 10, it's gonna be I, three is gonna be N, 1000, negative, I'm gonna change sign, CHS. It's gonna be my present value, and I'm gonna ask for the calculator future value. So 1,331, did you see we found the same, okay? So on this one, the future value here calculator, calculated is 1,331, okay? So what about Excel? Jarlando, can I use Excel with that? Yes, I think I will ask you now to open your Excel file. You can open Excel and ask for a new ta table. I'm gonna wait a little. Let me share my Excel file. I have an Excel here with me too. So you can see my Excel, let me increase it. Okay, can you see it well, anyone? Hey everyone, can you see it too well? Yes, we can, Jolanda. Okay, thank you so much. So here are the current formulas we use on Excel to calculate future value, present value in annuities, okay? So in this one, this one N is N, and we call it N per, okay, N P E R. So when I wanna calculate the rate, I will use equals rate, okay? When I wanna calculate the payments for um, the annuities I'm, I'm going to still show you, we calculate with PMT, okay? Uh, PV is equals PV and FV equals FV, okay? So in this situation, we already calculated for a single amount. We calculated FV, yes? Okay, so N equals to three. I'm going to put here three, okay? Rate 10%. Oh, what is percentage? Okay, that's here. PMT, I don't have it. PV equals to 1,000. And it's negative. Yeah, I cannot forget that. And FEV, this is what I want to calculate. So we are going to make like equals to FV and open parentheses. So can you see that Excel just tells us what to do? It's asking about the rate, the N per, and PMT, PV, and type, okay? So FV equals to rate, PMT equals to zero. I don't have payments, installments. That's what's asking me, okay? Uh, oh, sorry, rate. The second one is N per, okay? So rate, N period, after that PMT, after that PV, that's minus 1,000. And when I, add, when I was asked for the type, it says, is the payment that I'm gonna receive back, it's in the end of the period or beginning of the period. This is in the beginning of the month or beginning of the, or the end of the month, okay? Beginning of the year, end of year, okay? So in our case, 
the regular one is end of period, okay? So did you follow me, everyone? I wanna see a, a thumbs up if possible. Can you make a thumbs up there on the reactions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mohit. Thank Paul. Thank Angelo. I saw your thumbs up too, yeah? <laughs> Drew Londo, we so, do have a question in chat from Jordan Taylor. Um, does the sequence matter when creating in Excel and specifically the sequence of the terms in the equation? Yeah, sure. Like when we make that for all the formulas you have, Jordan, uh, it's when it opens for you, you can see that there is a sequence, okay? In this one, we follow the sequence. The sequence. So let me go back. To Excel, I'm gonna type enter, and you can see that we found the same one. We use it the formula, and we use it uh, the formula, and we use it uh, the calculator. Okay, so let me go back. Like, let me show you Jordan. So when I type it, let me type again, so you can see it. FEV open parenthesis. Can you see below, or is it very? Small Jordan, can you type for us if it's okay or not? So can you see that there is a sequence? Okay, so you have to follow that sequence. So again, rate, number of periods, PMT zero, PV minus one thousand, and type at zero. And close the formula and you have the same amount we had before, okay? Oh, thank you so much, Jordan, for that. So let me go back to my iPad. Oops. Okay, I think you can see that, yeah? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So with that, I showed you that you can have a lot of ways to do that. You can use the formula I gave you for the compound interest and simple interest. You can use table and you can use uh, uh, Excel file also, okay? So with that, let me first make our first concept check, okay? So as you know how to do it, uh, this is how we work every class. Uh, you can see the poll, a pop-up on your screen, okay? So every time I'm gonna stop and ask you to make this concept check with us, I always give my students three minutes to do it, okay? This is the regular time we use on final exams, midterm exams, okay? So we try always to, uh get to you uh like as the real world okay like cpa exam cma exam so three minutes is the regular time for that and gerlando after this poll is closed we do have two questions in chat oh i see now uh-huh so tyler what's the payment amount at zero Okay, we don't have payments in the middle of it. We only have PV and the future value in the end. This is what we're calculating. So PMT equals zero, okay? So Zohair, like we will, we will be able to use Excel to give answers to questions for quizzes or exams. Uh, yeah, it's like in the final exam, it's uh, in all, most of the cases, I think in all cases, uh, at least on my courses, okay? And the, uh, the other ones I know is uh, the faculties. It's open book and open computer, open minds, okay? So um, you are allowed to use Excel, okay? And we always ask you to upload your questions, mainly when there, there are subjective questions, okay? And Jorlando, we did get um, a private question from a heat uh, wise Oh, they just posted public. Uh, why is PV negative? Oh, thank you, Mohit, for asking. So remember that I said that when we have outflows, they are negative. So the person is making an investment. 
So the investment is an outflow. So an outflow is negative. This is how the computer understands outflows and inflows. Okay, so we put it negative because it's an outflow in this case. Okay, and FEV will show up for you as a positive number because it's an inflow. Okay, Mohit. Okay, so I'm gonna close the poll, everyone. Oh, Paul, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing here, how would inflows look in a word problem? So it's uh, inflows means that you are receiving the money, okay? So you're not paying. So this is an inflow. So I'm gonna end poll and I'm gonna share results. So we cannot see who is answering here, okay? We can only see the, the, the bars running. And I see that two, two students market letter B as ball, as Bravo, and uh, 11 students market D as Delta, okay? So in this case, let's see how it works. So Oliver Kim, uh, so Oliver Kim, Invest five thousand in a bank account, earnings, uh, earning eight percent interest, compounding annually. So, inverse when it says inverse five thousand means an outflow. Okay, so it means that five thousand. I have to change the sign to negative. Okay, this is my PV, my present value. Okay, so let me make this also. So this is PV, okay, 5,000, it's an outflow. In a bank account earning 8% interest. So 8% is I. Compounded, uh, compounding annually. So 8% means per year, remember that? It's always per year when it doesn't say anything. So how much we have in his account in four years? So four is N, okay? So how much should it be FV? So FEV will be an, an inflow in this case, Paul. Did you see that? So this is an inflow. I'm receiving back the money. So it's an inflow, okay? So in this case, let me put my calculator back, yeah? 5,000 change sign is my PV. Um, four and, and I equals to how much I forgot? Eight, okay. Eight is my I. So FV equals to 6,802, okay? Let me go back there. So when I do that, I can see that most of the students market the correct one, okay? So PV equals to 6,802. Okay, everyone, got it? Okay, that's fine. So now uh, let's talk about annuities, okay? So annuities, uh, they are a little bit different from the single amount. Single amount tells us that we have only PV. Uh, so let me, me make a follow-up here with you. So single amount, we have PV, FV, N, and I, because PMT is always zero, okay? So this is the single amount one. Oh, Paul, you have your raised hand. Do you want to unmute, your, unmute yourself? So please, Thomas, can you unmute uh, Paul, please? Hi, Paul. Yeah, I just wanted, since we're, I just wanted to clarify that negative 5,000 is because we're investing, investing. When it goes positive, is it written? Do we see it any other way? Like, is it parens or something or meaning? Do you see what I'm saying? Like the investment is 5,000. I understand it's going out or, you know, like we're, yeah, we're that's investing 5,000. Does it look differently in another form? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Coming that, in. That, is it positive? Oh, like no negative? Yeah, that's it. So uh, when it's negative, you can see in different styles on Excel. Okay. If you change to number, uh, accounting, uh, money. Okay. So uh, the parenthesis means negative two, okay? And, but in the calculator, we will only put the minus in front of it, okay? Uh, but you can see other types on Excel for sure. And when you, you type also like in a document, you, you, you can use both, but regularly when you are 
working with money in an accountant's business administration world, we put in parentheses, okay? Uh, but this 5,000 investment means that you are investing, so the cash flow is leaving your wallet, okay? So this is why it means an outflow. And when it's an outflow, we have to make this input as a negative, okay? So we use negative for outflows. Uh, when we make investments, it's an outflow also. When we are working with financial math, okay? And this is the algorithm also used by computers in general, okay? When you are working with financial math uh, also, okay? So thank you so much, Paul, for your question. Uh, may I answer you? Did I answer you? Uh, please. Oh, okay, thank you so much for that. Okay, so about the annuities, uh, as I told you, in a simple uh, amount, we use it only PV, FV, N, and I. This is why on Excel, PMT equals zero, okay? But now we are going to work with annuities, okay? And the annuities means that this is a series of cash flow of the same amount received or paid each period, okay? So examples I brought here for you, it's the low one on which period interest is paid in equal amounts. Okay, so don't forget about that. One characteristic is equal amounts. Okay, if I have different amounts of payments, I cannot use this formulas. Okay, I have to make different single amounts. Okay, a lease paid in equal installments during a specified period of time also. Okay, so... This is another example. So in, a, in, a, in financial math, we have free annuities, okay? You can see here two in your slide, uh, the ordinary annuity and annuity due, okay? So the ordinary annuity cash flows occur at the end of each period, annuity due cash flow occur at the beginning of each period. So I'm gonna draw for you now the two annuities with N equals to five. Okay, so you can see that really very well. Okay, with no FV, just PV and the installments and the payments. Okay, with the annuities. So for the ordinary annuity, I have here PV. I have here the line I told you before. Okay, and I'm going to tell you that I have the period is, is per year. Okay, so I have five years one, two, three four and five, okay? So I'm gonna pay this a big one and I will have receivables. I'm gonna have outflows, sorry, inflows uh, five times, okay? So one, two, three, four, five. This delta here, this delta, this delta period, this other delta period, each one of this is a period, okay? And it starts here on T0, okay? So you go through T1, T2, T3, and ahead through T5, okay? And you can see that it starts here, okay? And you have the end of the period here. So the end of the period means that the annuity is paid Okay, in the end of that period, it can be like T0 can be like December 31, and here means December 31 of the other year. Okay, or maybe it can be December 1st, no problem with that. Okay, but I have the period instead, that's the biggest point. And this says it's the end of each one, I'm paying the annuity. So let me show you another example, but with annuity due with the same variables, okay? But an annuity due. So I'm gonna write here. So I have PV and it's gonna start on T0. Sorry, I'm a terrible drawer. So I have here T0, T1, T2, T3, I'm gonna try, I'm trying to make the same period there. T4 and T5. But there's an annuity here, the annuity due, 
the cash flows occur at the beginning of each period, okay? So what is the beginning, the first? It's here, look. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth, okay? So the variables are the same from both, n equals five. Here, n equals five periods. Here, n equals five periods. But the payments are in the beginning. Can you see that? Beginning of each period. And that makes a lot of difference. Okay? And I'm going to see that now. So for the annuities I have, I have these two ones. But let me go to the third. I told you that there is a third annuity. Okay? I talked about one second. Let's go to the third. I'm going to change mine. Okay. So the third one is called Mixed. Or can also be called deferred. Okay. So mixed or deferred, uh, it's going to be like I have here PV. I have here one, two, three periods. And now we start my inflows. Imagine they are five and the same. So because I don't have too much slides here to do it but the spirits here are the same okay let's play like Peter pen so in this one look i have here a mix it why do i have a mix it because it's the period for time it starts after three periods okay so i can work here with the two annuities i have i can work with how can i bring these amounts here to the present value so i can use an annuity do I'm going to use it here, the PV1, okay? And after I bring every inflows to PV1, I can bring PV1 to PV2. And this is only a single amount, okay? Or maybe I can work as here, PV1, as an ordinary annuity. This is an annuity too. This is an ordinary annuity. And after that, I can bring to present value. Did you understand everyone? So this is called a mix set because I use both, okay? I use the annuity and the simple amount at the same time, okay? But in this case, I choose which one I will use, like the ordinary or the annuity do, okay? So let me work now and let me show you one thing. Like I showed you the first one, in this class say, hey, this is how I work. Let me, let me increase this one. So, okay, you can work with the formula, okay? And the present one. So how should I work with the ordinary annuity? Okay, here are the formulas. I have to tell you that I teach this for more than 20 years and I have never remembered these ones, okay? Never, okay? So what should I do, Jalando? Please, Excel. Look out later, okay? Do that. Don't, don't put this formula on your pocket, okay? On your wallet, okay? You're not gonna do that, please. You're not gonna be in a meeting and say, hey, excuse me, I'm gonna look at the book, okay? No, you're not gonna do that. You are in a partner at, at, at your, in a big company where a consultant, okay? You're gonna say, hey, hold on. I'm gonna open Excel or please, can you borrow me your uh, calculator? And we can do that, okay? So let's do it. Let's do this first one. So let me open the concept check. You can see a pop-up like this on your screen. So I will ask you to go to Excel and calculate your PMT as I showed you before, like equals to PMT. Okay, so go to Excel and make equals to PMT, okay? And open parenthesis. Equals PMT and open parenthesis. You have that the rate, okay? So rate equals the 7%, okay? Which is the period? It's gonna be five. Okay, period equals five. I'm typing here, okay, I'm putting here like it should be, but you have to put it 
differently in different cells, okay? Uh, PV, it's uh, zero in this case, okay? FEV, it's eight million. And the type should be zero or one, okay? So zero, if it is in the end of period, and one, it's in the beginning of period. Okay, everyone? If you wanna do this, uh, one point. So let's say if it's end or beginning, okay? So this Tinch uh, Fertilizer Corporation wants to accumulate 8 million. So, okay, I, I already know that 8 million is an inflow in the end, okay? I want to accumulate that. So Stinch intends to make, oh, sorry, the funds are needed on January 2026. So January 2026, okay? So Stinch intends to make five equal annual deposits in a fund that will earn interest at 7% compound annually. So I equals seven, we already know that. So the first deposit is to make has to be made on January 1, 2021. So I have five deposits, okay? So one deposit, a second deposit, a third deposit, a fourth deposit, a fifth deposit in the, in the beginning. And this one is January 2021. This is what it says here. Look, be made on, oops, on January 2021, okay? So I have... January 2022, January 2023rd, January 2024th, and January 2025 and 26. Okay, everyone. So I can see here that is it starting the beginning or in the end of each period? Okay. So look that the last payment is on January 2026. And it's one he one year before. So here is delta, 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 and delta. So I see that I start in the beginning of each period. So in this case, I have to put one in the formula. Okay, everyone. So who is using the calculator? You must play begin also. Let me show you in the in the calculator also. Like I cannot forget that. So let me share my Excel file. Okay, so here we go. So N, sorry, N equals to five, rate equals to seven, PMT, it's what I wanna know. Previous is zero, FV eight million. Okay, everyone. So now we go through PMT. PMT rate. Oh, I, I forgot to put 7%. Sorry for that. 7%. So equals PMT. So rate, number of periods, PV is zero. FEV is 8 million. And the type, as I told you, is beginning of the each period, okay? When I do that, oops, sorry, one. So I'm gonna close parentheses and I'm gonna ask for the result. And I see that four students marked the correct one, okay? So when I go back, let me go back. So you can see here that for each of this one, okay, each payment I have to have 8 million in the end, okay, I have to make, uh, 
deposit of 1,300,117 for five years, starting already now, okay? So this is what is telling me, okay, everyone? So this is what I have in this first question. Uh, so I'm gonna stop now. And uh, I have other questions here, but uh, I'm gonna keep my notes. And I, I have other questions that I put here, but unhappily I'm not gonna have time to do that, okay? So I'm gonna ask he, you now to join the breakout room. So uh, please, Kate, can you upload the handout? I will ask you only to make question number two, okay? About the lease options. I have other questions. I can send all the answers for the other questions, okay, everyone? So uh, let me stop sharing my screen. So you can see three problems, okay? You can see problem number one, okay? Problem number two, this is the one, the one I, I would like to ask you to do, okay? And question number three is a challenge. It's the most difficult one, okay? Uh, no worries, I think we're not gonna have time to work with all of them. So on this breakout room, if you have never working on this, I will ask you to, when you join, uh, introduce yourself, say hi to your classmates, okay? Uh, one thing that I'll ask you also is to share your screen, okay? And you can work with the Excel file, with your uh, classmates. I think it's gonna be easier to uh, work with these questions. Okay, everyone. So uh, so you have 10 minutes to do that. If you wanna do question number one, no worries, or question number two, but I think number two is more, uh, it's more engaged and you have to choose between two options, okay? So see you in 10 minutes. So hello everyone, uh, hello everyone, welcome back to the main room. Okay, so we are together now. So this is how we work in the breakout room. Okay, so we always send the students previously uh, some handouts uh, so you can work, start working at home and bring to have a conversation. We always try to bring real cases, okay? So you can learn a little bit more how to work in a real world. This is the main uh, uh, thing that we work here a lot. Uh, cases from our uh, faculties here, or cases from Harvard also. But we always try to uh, work with uh, all the tools we have, okay, uh, in a, in a, in, with real problems, okay? So, uh, so after we, you come back, I'm going to show you how we solve this. I'm going to only solve one question. So the regular way we do is to call a student. We always visit the breakout rooms to see how you are working, okay? So we always ask one student to solve that question with us. It's very normal to do that. And, or maybe I can do like I'm gonna do now. It's only to show you how to solve like question one as an example. So for, for the first question, I can show here my handout. And I have Excel with me. So it's it's asking you how to calculate the number of periods, okay? When you have uh, uh, an investment of 30,000 and how much you are gonna receive in there, it's six, 60,000 and with an I equals to 8%. So for that case, in per, it's equals to, uh, I equals to four thing, oh, sorry, yes. Uh, 8%, sorry. So the second one, uh, zero, it's, it's the payment. Uh, B3, it's PV. B2 is FV. And uh, the regular way I told you is that we are always use the end of period and the beginning of periods is only using when it's had, okay? Or maybe when you can see the dates, okay? So um, for question number one, B, uh, the, uh, it's asking us um, what is the interest rate implicit in this agreement? So we calculated the rate here with PV equals to 28,700. 
7,000 negative and N equals to five. So the I is equals to 7%. And for problem three, it's asking how much should be the annual payment Sam, Sam, Sam must make to pay back his friend. So this is an amazing friend, yeah? So PV equals to 10,000, N equals to 10, I equals to 9%, and the period is equals to the end of the period of the payments, and we calculate P. So look one thing that is very important here. When you say that PV is 10 or is positive, it's because the payments should be negative. It's, it's the contrary, okay? Uh, every time I'm gonna calculate on Excel or the calculator, we are going to always take care of the negative numbers and positive numbers. So again, take care about the inflows and outflows, okay? Try to draw always the diagram, the financial diagram, and take care that the hardest point in uh, financial math equations and problems, it's to understand the equation because Excel and the calculator will solve to you in less than one second, Okay. So I'm going to close my Excel file. Uh, you can see here that I have the answers for the other questions. And I'm going to, and this is the first sheet I used in the beginning of the class. So I will upload all of this now here. So you can have the answers from it. And if you want to talk about that, okay. So I, I can, we can, you can send me an email and I can answer you for sure, okay? So let me send you all the answers here as we don't have too much time to solve them now. So I only to have to tell you, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoy, uh, you, you enjoyed uh, our class, okay? And this is how we try to do and try to get to engage it as more as we can, okay? So thank you a lot. And Kate, uh, it's yours now. Um, thank you so much. Yes, we did go over a little of, of a time and normally we'd have some time for questions, but we do want to be respectful of everyone's time tonight. So, um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Professor Lima. That was a great session on TVOM. I definitely learned something though. I got a little confused there about uh, a little bit, you know, when you started, but, um, we really appreciate all of your, your great insights today. I hope everyone enjoyed this experience. And again, this would be just like, one of the classes that you could experience in Geese Online program. So thank you all for being here um, and bringing some great um, participation. November 3rd is our next deadline that's coming right up to apply for either a graduate certificate program or one of our degree programs, the IMBA, IMSM, or IMSA programs. Um, for a spring start in January. So we're really here to help you through this process. We're happy to, to answer your questions and meet with you and, and walk you through the whole application process as well. Um, there is a, a application waiver on your screen now. And if you're applying um, to meet this November 3rd deadline, go ahead. There is an application fee charge right now, but if you use this code, um, we will go ahead and waive that fee for you. So. I'll also send that out in some follow-up communication um, tomorrow. So I hope everyone has a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are from. And um, again, thanks for being here and have a good night.